So does Bitcoin deserve to be at $30,000? What can we expect as we're about to enter a new year from everyone's favorite cryptocurrency? And who have I brought on the show today? Arguably uh, the most recognizable uh, face in the world when it comes to Bitcoin investing, Max Kaiser. He is the host of RT's Kaiser Report, also of Orange Pill Podcast. And he's also the man that likes to remind us he told us to buy Bitcoin back at a dollar in 2011. It's Max Kaiser, welcome back to the show. Yeah, yeah, Danielle, uh, great. I got my Michael Saylor shirt on today. <laughs> well, I'm happy because we're going to talk about uh, Michael Saylor and his uh, Twitter combo with Elon Musk in a bit. But first, Bitcoin uh, hitting uh, its new record here as we're about to end 2020. Is it worthy of the title, Max Kaiser? Right. Well, I guess it was uh, two years ago. I said it was going to close out 2020 at 28,000. So that looks pretty good. I haven't unveiled uh, my 2021 prediction officially yet, but I will do so probably in the next week or so. On this show today? Uh, I'm not going to re reveal that number today on this show. I'm sorry, but... Uh, I will, maybe uh, we'll do a follow-up and you'll be the first to know. But. Okay, all right. Well, wait, I I'm not finished with you yet on that one. But first, what's behind the rally here, uh, Max? Is it longer term uh, investors who are hedging against a weaker US dollar, a scare of inflation, um, or is it just- well, uh, uh, let, let me explain You know what's going on from kind of an insider's perspective, yeah. inside ball, if you want to know. I mean, you're, you've got a pretty sophisticated audience. So let me tell you what's really going on. For, you had to compare it to what happened back in 1992 when George Soros attacked the British pound and the Bank of England. And he broke the Bank of England, if you recall. And he made a quick billion dollars. The Stan Druckenmiller was the architect of that. And right now, what we're seeing is a similar thing going on with Bitcoin. And what Michael Saylor figured out, and now possibly Elon Musk and others, I think Larry Ellison's going to get involved, is they have the Federal Reserve Bank and other central banks in a very precarious position because those banks have artificially pushed interest rates down to these extraordinary levels of uh, almost zero and 18.4 uh, trillion are now negative. So, uh, and if they can borrow as Saylor did at 75 basis points just now for 650 million, and uh, by Bitcoin, uh, they are in a position of a speculative attack on the Federal Reserve Bank. Make no mistake about this. Michael Saylor and the Bitcoiners are attacking the Federal Reserve Bank uh, and the global central banking system as Soros did to the Bank of England. That's kind of the template that's being used globally. That's the inside ball. That's why Bitcoin, you could very easily see it trade to two, three, four hundred thousand dollars a coin pretty quickly because the central banks have left themselves open to this arbitrage, to this attack. And it's on, you know, the game is on now and no, no one is uh, pretending that this is not happening anymore. Okay, but to counter that attack, we're seeing central banks, China leading the way, the euro probably following suit coming out with their own digital currencies china's in the process of testing one out right now is that a response to protect themselves uh, no because the currency they have now is a digital currency uh the dollar the yen the euro the euro it, they are all uh basically fiat currencies centrally controlled they don't compete with bitcoin they're centrally controlled um, and they are analogous to fiat money. They have nothing to do with Bitcoin, which is decentralized. And um, it has uh, security features that none of those centralized coins would ever have. So it doesn't compete um, with uh, Bitcoin. The only way the central banks can stop the speculative attack aimed at destroying the central banks. And I'm, I'm, I'm giving you some harsh reality here, but you know, people should take this on board because a world, we're entering into a world post central banks here is the only way they can defend against, against this is to raise interest rates. And uh, they're not gonna do that. I mean, the bet is that Jerome Powell and these other banks are not gonna raise rates. That's, that's the bet on Bitcoin right now. That's the multi hundred trillion dollar bet being made on Bitcoin right now, that the banks, central banks will not raise rates. And as long as they keep lowering rates and as long as rates keep going negative, then the Bitcoin trade is an asymmetric bet. It's a one-way bet. And it's, it's got almost virtually no top. I mean, you're talking 
hundreds of thousands of dollars per coin or higher. Even, you know, JP Morgan just came out with an estimate of $650,000 per Bitcoin. Citibank is estimating 300,000 per Bitcoin. So they, I think they kind of see what's happening here. They want to get ahead of it. They want some exposure to it, but nothing's going to stop this now. Uh, the central banks, they thought they had the game completely rigged with their collusion, the global banks all working together to keep the, and not only to keep fiat money viable beyond its uh, term, but uh, to attack uh, gold, as we know, you know, JP Morgan, how many fines have they paid for gold manipulation? Numerable, innumerable fines. And uh, we see that in all the big banks, the bullion banks, and, and they thought they had it made. They thought that they would escape, but Michael Saylor and others figured out that they've got this vulnerability and uh, the game is on. I, I, I really, I got into Bitcoin as part of my efforts, you know, with Stacy going back many years now, the global insurrection against banker occupation is what we called it. You know, we, we've talked about the dangers of fiat money and central banking for a number of years. And Bitcoin was obvious to me back in 2011 that this could be a, an escape route. And now um, we've got the likes of Michael Saylor, possibly Elon Musk, Paul Tudor Jones over there in his hedge fund. He's, he's now piling on. Uh, I would, Stan Druckenmiller, the architect of the Bank of England raid is made positive comments on Bitcoin. Uh, Ray Dalio was, a, was a, a skeptic. Now he's kind of neutral. I think Ray Dalio will be put 10, 20% of his portfolio into Bitcoin in the next few months. That particularly since his performance has been pretty bad for 2020, he needs to get back in the race here. He needs to, he needs something, some alpha. He, Ray needs alpha. Is that really the game changer, Max, as opposed to, let's say, you know, five, six years ago for Bitcoin, where we're seeing an acceptance by mainstream Wall Street of Bitcoin? The acceptance by mainstream Wall Street, you know, Wall Street is sells products, right? And um, they are part of the distribution, but they're not the key decision makers so much. I mean, not, not the vast army of brokers out there, um, but it doesn't matter whether people understand this or not. It's like um, how many people could explain, you know, the, uh, the exchange rate mechanism disaster of Black Wednesday in 1992, right. you know, ask the average investor, how did Soros bankrupt the Bank of England no. in 1992? And they'll say, I have no idea what you're talking about. So, right. you know, a year from now, two years from now, Bitcoin was three, four, five hundred thousand dollars a coin. And, and you'll say, oh, well, you own it in your account. Can you tell me how Sailor organized a speculative account back in, 20, in 2021? They'll be like, no, I have no idea what you're saying, but I know I made a lot of money. It right? does, so, yeah, exactly. Need acceptance. I, I don't think it matters then, but what, what I'm saying is like for, you know, uh, mainstream folks here, you know, they see like Sailor, they see Dalio, they see Drunkenmiller. All of a sudden they say, oh, well, maybe Bitcoin's not so risky if they're taking, you know, part in it. All of a sudden they feel safer investing in Bitcoin because of this acceptance. Yeah, well, you know, if they, if people, who, <laughs> people who put their uh, the, the $1,200 relief check in, in Bitcoin, right. I think are close to triple their money already. Uh, the government's sending out another $600. You know, I mean, the average investor is got the buying power, but you know, I mean, uh, when I was working on Wall Street in the 1980s, you know, you had a shift to the institutions, you know, they are the, uh, the the price discovery is in the institutional level. You know, the retail trader is not driving price discovery. It's the institutional money is driving price discovery, and the institutional money is on, is, is figured out that they've got a one way bet here, and so and they've got un un virtually unlimited buying power because the central banks have made the cost of money virtually nothing. So what Sailor did was, and I got to give it to to Sailor, I got to hand it to him. He could have taken the easy route and simply borrowed a lot of money and bought back his own stock. He would have made a ton of money. But instead he thought, you know what, as an engineer, as a rocket scientist, as a deep thinker, I, you know, I figured out what these cyber hornets, as he call, calls uh, the Bitcoiners, I figured, I, I understand what they're saying here, that there's a vector out of the central bank collusion that is destroying the, been destroying the world. And I can make 10, 20, 30 times what I would have made had I been buying back my own stock. Now, you know, the mercenaries that run these big companies like Apple or other companies with huge cash positions, they're not gonna, or Jeff Bezos, you know, they're not gonna sit back and watch Michael Saylor get richer than them, right? Saylor could be richer than Bezos if this works. And Bezos is not gonna sit back and say, oh, jolly good. 
he's a wonderful chap. Good luck to you, matey. No, he's going to be like, I don't want somebody else being richer than me. And Larry Ellison doesn't want anyone being richer than him. Elon Musk, right? So they're like, wait a minute, we got to get in on this trade. So there's just a huge rush by institutional money. Whether the retail person or the average person figures it out, uh, or they get involved, it doesn't matter. You know, they, they're not a factor uh, at, at all. You know, America is run by a clique of uh, super billionaires and uh, they have to understand what they're doing. So, so getting to that exchange between Saylor and Elon Musk, and I know Peter Schiff went on Twitter saying, well, people are forgetting the second half of that convo where yes, at first Elon Musk expressed some interest. Saylor said, you know, do your, uh, do your shareholders a $200 billion favor. Elon Musk leader tweeted, well, no, Bitcoin, I think is BS, just like fiat money. Where does the truth lie there, Max, in your opinion? I know you didn't speak to Elon Musk directly, but where do you think it lies? Right. Well, the, the learning curve for Bitcoin, it, everyone is on it in the, at their own speed. So for me, I got it in 2011. Uh, Michael Saylor was uh, looked at it in 2013. He didn't understand it. it. It took him five or six years to really figure it out. We've got Elon Musk is now looking at it. And because he's a smart guy, he'll, the, he'll get orange pilled, as we call it. And he, he'll understand what's going on here and he'll jump in. Peter Schiff, you know, he's in, he's in denial, basically. He's a, he's a fiat money addict and like a heroin addict or a drug addict, you, you can't do anything about it until Peter Schiff bottoms, he, until he hits fiat money bottom. He's not, gonna, he's not gonna be able to help himself. And there's nothing anyone can do to help Peter Schiff. You know, he has to, he has to hit bottom. He has to realize he's been dead wrong for the 10 years I've been telling him to buy Bitcoin since it was a dollar. I was at his house in Westport, Connecticut over Christmas a few years ago when it was under a hundred dollars. I begged him and his son uh, to, uh, who heard about it, who's now buying Bitcoin. Uh, and I told him to buy it a thousand. I've been telling him to buy it for 10 years. Uh, but he's, uh, he's, he's not, he hasn't hit bottom yet. And it's very, very sad uh, to see somebody like that destroy their life, uh, destroy uh, their career. Uh, but that's some people are there. They just can't get it. They can't get it. They can't, they can't, they can't get Bitcoin sober. And I, it's an open invitation. I'd love to have you and Peter Schiff both on. I, I've debated him several times. I know, I know. Every time I just beat him as up. the moderator. You know, it's so like he, he doesn't have any arguments. He's never studied even for five minutes anything about Bitcoin. He cannot make an intelligent argument about it. He simply says, he just uh, mouths, you know, platitude. He just says silly things and he just. He, you know, th he's an addict. It's like arguing with a heroin addict to put, take the needle out of your arm, Peter. It's a really bad idea. He goes, no, just one more shot. One more, just one, one more shot. Right? There's no way you can get someone like that to come around and, and help themselves. And, you know, sometimes, you know, some of us have to die, you know, so that others can live. You know, we can't right. get overly uh, sentimental about right. Peter Schiff. If he wants to go down with the fiat money ship, there's nothing we can do about it. I, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to, I've spent all the time I'm ever going to spend trying to help Peter Schiff from obliterating him, his career and his life. And I'm not going to spend any more time on Peter Schiff. I got 10,000 people in my telegram group from all over the world who are buying $10 and $20 of Bitcoin every day. And their lives are improving. They're supporting their families. They're getting an education. They're, they're escaping the, the hyperinflation in Venezuela. And they're escaping poverty in Cuba. Those are the people we need to focus on. Don't focus on this bloated fiat money idiot who is simply trying to get attention by pretending to be even stupider than he really is. All right, it's okay. Such a waste of time. Let's get back to your point about the Fed, which is obviously a very important one. It's we are in a Fed fuel party and we're living in a world where Tesla stock is what now up as we speak 730%. Are these valuations real? And that's the that's the number one question when it comes to Bitcoin. Is Bitcoin really worth 30,000? These valuations are not real and they're in a bubble. The only thing that's not in a bubble is Bitcoin. So you've got the stock market. The bond market has never been this high in 240 years in America. It's never been this high in over 300 years in the United Kingdom. The bond market is in a 40 year forming bubble, right? When that bubble is if negative interest rates are obviously telling us that that bubble is about to burst. And that's a huge multi quadrillion dollar bubble about to burst. Stock market is in a bubble and property is in a bubble. Everything that's reliant on fiat money is in a bubble. Bitcoin is the only thing that's not in a bubble. Bitcoin is trading at a discount to the 
amount of kind of uh, criminality that the central banks are involved with, the, the fiat money that's sloshing around in the system. It's the, the only, it's the cheapest asset in the world right now at $23,000, $24,000 a coin. You know, it's, uh, it's incredibly cheap. It's, 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 and, and the risk is, it's gotten less risky at $24,000 than it was even at $10. The, the, the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, the largest uh, Bitcoin fund in the world, tracking $1 billion per month. It's right, massive, it's massive inflow. So, the, so the you know, I guess the fear for some who are looking should again to Bitcoin is what happens if we start seeing outflows here. Well, I don't think you're going to see outflows because you've got a 100 trillion dollars in cash in investable assets around the world that are controlled by money managers, and um, so less than one percent of that is in is in Bitcoin. Uh, if you look at all the assets around the world, it's about $300 trillion if you include things like real estate and other things. And so the amount of uh, money invested in Bitcoin right now is minuscule. And compared to the, the that torrent of cash is going to go up exponentially. So it's a billion dollars here. It's going to be a lot more uh, going forward. And um, it, it, you know, Bitcoin's market cap of roughly $400 billion, it, it's it's very small compared to gold. And it's going to trade parapasu with gold. So that implies uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars per coin. There's no reason why Bitcoin shouldn't have a market cap equal, if not higher than gold. There's absolutely no argument against that. There's no possible argument. No one's made a good argument against it. No, no good argument exists for that. Can Again, Bitcoin be manipulated? Not like gold, because of the fact that you've got the private keys in the hands of the users. So unlike gold, which settles for cash, and whenever it gets too high, the COMEX and these other exchanges can bang it down with naked short selling, which has been documented to be factual and true. There's nobody that's not under debate anymore. Bitcoin has the, has the brilliant feature of being able to pull the private keys out at any moment, and therefore any kind of derivatives piling on to manipulate the price, that souffle would collapse in an instant. So there, there is leverage, don't get me wrong, but you cannot manipulate the price of Bitcoin using derivatives like you can everything else, including gold, no. When we spoke about two years ago, we've spoken many times between then and now, but uh, you had dropped a bomb on, on the show I was working on at the time, saying that China had 20,000 tons of gold and it was working to, to launch a gold-backed uh, cryptocurrency with the sole goal of destroying the US dollar. How much closer are we to that? Well, the tensions between China and the US are getting stronger, right? Even today, the US put out a list of companies that can't do business in China. I think China's gonna put a moratorium on doing business with Boeing, right? So tit for tat, the, the acrimony between China and America is growing quite, quite strong. Um, we know that China has been aggressively buying gold. We know that China, Russia, and other countries are, have uh, bilateral trade deals outside of the US dollar. We know the US dollar is losing in, in the number of, in its daily activity around the world. It's, it's just barely holding on to 50% of global trade in US dollars. And that's down from 85% post-World War II. So it's been steadily going down. So China, I, yeah, I think that they'll come out with their own currency. And um, I think it'll probably be backed by gold. And based on the rising tensions, based on the technological advances China's making, they got people on the moon, you know, they introduced a new, uh, what they call a uh, artificial sun technology. This is uh, some incredible uh, atomic uh, technological breakthrough that they've just invented. Huawei is the leading in 5G. They're working on 6G. So China is like pulling away from the situation. How, how much closer are we? I think, I think that it would make sense that, because it's clearly it would be an act of war. Uh, so I think that as they want to, you know, the, let they, I think they're just waiting for the U.S. to make a, the first move. I think that when the U.S. does something like blows some Chinese vessel out of the South China Sea or something like that and really starts shooting at people, I think then China will say, okay, guess what? <laughs> We're, we've got a gold-backed crypto and the dollar just dropped 50%, right? So, and, and in the technology world, you can you can do it like this, right? It, it can You can launch it pretty quickly. They already have... The entire country is totally hooked up 
on the internet, on the web with the, the, the telephones and everyone uses uh, telephones to pay for everything. It's, I mean, it's not, a, I don't like, I don't admire that system. I'm, I think it's a hugely problematic and it's a big human rights issue in my opinion, but nevertheless, that's the fact, that's what's going on. And uh, so I think the timing question is, I think they'll wait for the US to make the first move on a, on a military basis and then they'll kick it back and then they'll come back with that. Let's wrap with your forecast, Max. I get it. You want to save the scoop for your own show. I get it. But what can you reveal about your 2021 Bitcoin forecast? Obviously higher than the last time we spoke. Arrange something. <laughs> right. Yeah, well, I think um, it, it, it's, it's higher. You know, it's a lot higher. For, for 2021, uh, we have, um, it's funny that the, the exchange between uh, Elon Musk and uh, Michael Saylor was that Michael Saylor said the, the most, Peter Schiff, of course, focused on the, the stupid thing that makes, that doesn't mean anything. He, he missed, the, he missed the, the forest for the trees. He, he missed the point, as he always does. Saylor said to Elon Musk, I will share my playbook with you. Okay, that was the key phrase. In other words, Sailor is talking to CEOs all over the world yeah. and telling him how he did it, right? Because he knows that if he gets 10, 20, 30, 40 more companies to do right. the same thing, that Bitcoin price is going to get yeah. to where it needs to go a lot faster, right? So he's just in his, his, his own self-interest. This is game theory played out amongst yeah. multi-billionaires yeah. globally. And the big losers are the central banks. Uh, I'll make this prediction for 2021. Now, well, 2021, 22, I predict that one of the major central banks in the world will close utterly and completely. And, um, and that will start a, a transition post central bank. Central banks, have, we've outlived their usefulness. But they never really were that good to begin with. But I think now we finally figured out that- They would close and transform into another entity Digital Everyone entity has their own bank. If you have own Bitcoin, bank. you can do transactions with anybody without permission at any time. It's unconfiscatable, can't censor it, and it's deflationary. I don't need a central bank. The central bank, the just like we got rid of the horse and buggy when the when the automotive came around. Now that Bitcoin's here, we don't need central banks. They're they're not useful in any way. They don't they've gone beyond their remit. Instead of being a lender of last resort, they're now the buyer of first order. You know, the, the Bank of Japan owns like more than half of the, uh, the Nikkei. The, 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 central, the Swiss, the Swiss uh, Central Bank owns a huge position in Apple Computer, right? The, the Federal Reserve, I believe, buys Apple bonds, junk bonds. They buy junk bonds and they, because they couldn't do it legally, they set up a special purpose vehicle to do it on the side. They just broke the law because it was convenient to break the law to buy junk bonds on the central bank's balance sheet. So. That's like hiring Charles Manson as a babysitter, right? Like, <laughs> why would you have a central bank running your economy when there are recidivist law-breaking, um, you know, serial financial terrorists? You know, why would you have that? Why would you want that? What's the point of that? You know, the sooner we get rid of this albatross, this nightmare, you know, uh, the, and, and Bitcoin makes it possible. Bitcoin is the vector out. It's the, it's the vector out of the central bank problem. And the central banks thought they were so smug and so smart that they were gonna collude with each other all over the world and suppress the price of gold and go into negative interest rates to bail out their friends not the, at the banks, right? Because they're even though the banks are insolvent, they've been insolvent. All these major banks are insolvent. They've been insolvent for 20 years. You know, we're gonna keep, we're gonna just keep floating, floating, floating because we get the, you know, we're all getting rich playing this game. And Bitcoin basically is the silver bullet. You know, it's it's the bullet to the back of the head. It's two taps to the back of the head. It's Tony Soprano, you know, going to the Fed, <laughs> two taps to the back of the head, and you're done. And that's the way it should be. And we got to get rid of these central banks, you know, and we are in the next 24 months. We're going to go to a lot of funerals of central bankers, figuratively speaking. Uh, and and this is the only, this is the greatest hope. This is the greatest hope we have. Okay, would you be surprised to see, fill in this blank, would you? Would Max Kaiser be surprised to see Bitcoin over 100,000 in 2021? 
Just I, end on that. Geez, out my my prediction, you know, uh, and I, I'm I feel I'm feeling you know pressured to make my number here, you know. I, uh, I, I, I I made my position clear. I have not yet released my prediction for 2021. <laughs> That's a yes. That's Even a though yes. I was deadly accurate two years ago. Uh, it looks like, uh, you know, we're going to end this year at 28,000. Well, one thing's for sure. I know you think it's going to the moon. So we will, we will wrap on that note. Max, happy holidays to you and Stacy. Come back anytime. And, uh, yeah, enjoy enjoy the Bitcoin the Bitcoin rally here. I'm sure. Um, Do the twins own any Bitcoin? <laughs> Maybe I'll just have to I reveal that on Otherwise, the next. They're going to be very mad at you. Ten years from now, they'll be mom. You had Max Kaiser on the show, and you didn't buy Bitcoin. What were you thinking? You had Uncle Max on the show, and you didn't listen to him. What? They're uh, going to be mad. You better buy some for your twins <laughs> right away before it's the industry right now. Go to Swan Bitcoin forward slash Max and get ten dollars free of Bitcoin for your both of your twins. Okay, what better deal can that be than a Merry there. Christmas? <laughs> there you go, Max Kaiser. Thanks for keeping it real. Thanks for the inside scoop. We'll catch up with you soon. Okay. Yeah. Merry all Christmas. right. Happy 2021, and thank you all for watching. We'll have much more for you, so be sure to stay tuned to Stansberry Research. Follow us on all our social media channels. Thanks for watching. <laughs>